Hi, Shay Russell here and welcome to Rock Solid Investing. I'm here to talk to you about the economic indicator you've never heard of, but I actually think it's going to be quite rock solid going forward over this decade. Pardon the pun. I could not resist myself. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about some uh, made up indices that are often used as a gauge of consumer behavior or just to gauge how the economy is moving along overall. Now, you may have heard of the skyscraper index. Now, this index basically tells you uh, that the taller the building gets or the tallest building often falls on the eve of an economic downturn. So basically, the higher the buildings go, it's an excess buildup of uh, lending capacity in the economy and probably an economic downturns around the corner. Now, the skyscraper index has actually been quite reliable. It has been well studied. You can check it all out on Wikipedia. I'm not making this up. Uh, and it actually is quite a reliable indicator. However, as I said before, I think the skyscraper index really just represents excessive risky lending. Now, there's a couple of other uh, made up indices that you may have or may not have heard of. One is the Hemline Index, first coined in the 1920s. It suggested that the better the economy, the higher the hemlines went. Now, this index was actually quite accurate until the 1960s, where it was no longer shocking for a woman to bare her knees in public. Then another one that was coined in the late 1990s is the lipstick effect. Now, it is uh, this index, uh, the creation of this indice is often misattributed. Indice? Index. The creation of indices is plural. It's very difficult. The creation of this index is often attributed to one of the chairman of Estee Lauder, but it originally comes from a female a uh, female economist who noticed that when times were tough, women were more likely to buy a little luxury that is vis visible in semi-public places, like a lady's bathroom, as opposed to more expensive creams or eyeshadows or moisturizers that they use in the privacy of their own home. Now, the reason why it is attributed to a former chairman of Estee Lauder is because he did notice that lipstick sales did do quite well during the dot-com bust. Now, the the problem with the lipstick um, effect is that lipstick is very much trend based. So um, it, it's not overly reliable of how women behave during economic downturns. Another completely made up index comes from former Fed chairman Alan Greenspan. He coined the phrase the men's underpants index. Now the theory behind this is the sale of men's underpants is constant. The only people who see them being their spouse or other men in a locker room. Now obviously men don't really care about their underpants the same way women do. So he'd realised that if sales are always constant, if underwear sales are dropping it means that the belts are tightening for men at home and that the last thing that they are going to update will be their underwear given that virtually nobody sees them and let's be honest men's underwear isn't really a fashionable item men don't care what other men are wearing under their pants in a change room now uh, this one actually is quite uh, accurate this one holds water the reason is uh, it was noted during the 2007 to 2008 financial crisis in the US men's underpants sales absolutely dived as men were buying less underpants as the economy, US economy went into a recession. However, come 2009, 2010, as things picked up in the US, men's underpants sales absolutely skyrocketed, but went back to normal, the long-term average. That brings me to the economic indicator you've never heard of, the Botox Barometer. Now, I have completely made this up, but this is based on sound research. There is a link to an article below where I do talk about this. Simply put, Botox, cosmetic injectables or fillers what, or dermal fillers, whatever you want to call them, used to be considered a luxury. Pre-pandemic, there was something that ladies who lunch would get or something the wealthy would get or any Kim K lookalikes, wannabe alikes would get to because they just wanted to change the shape of their face. Now, I've got absolutely nothing against the use of Botox or dermal fillers. I think they're great for anybody who wants to use them. The point being, though, is they weren't seen as a necessity. However, fast forward to the fact that most of us have spent two years locked inside our houses while our governments played open, shut them with our economies. What this means is we've basically been looking at our faces via Zoom 
for two years and we're becoming more critical than ever about how we look. It turns out here in Australia and also over in the UK that people are foregoing other luxuries in order to make sure that they keep up their new beauty regime, which is keeping up their Botox and their dermal fillers because they don't like how they look on camera. A current CEO of an injectable chain in Australia was quoted in the Australian Financial Review as saying that most of his customers consider cosmetic injectables essential and he actually thinks the industry might be recession resilient because we now see this as a necessity. Going on later into the article to point out that women or sorry, not just women, his clients will forego other, necess other, um, other expenses like travel, uh, new jackets, new shoes in order to keep up their Botox regime. Now, this has been backed up by the Derma Institute in the UK saying after several months of staring at their own faces, people have started to criticise and analyse their facial features more than usual akin to the selfie effect. In many parts of the world, aesthetic practitioners report a surge in demand for cosmetic procedures post lockdown. Now, if you stop and think about it, in the past couple of years, cosmetic injectable clinics are becoming ubiquitous. They've gone from being, you know, next door to a plastic surgeon's office or some out of the way location, or perhaps only in the city, to their filling up shopping centres near you. And also to because of the increasing use of them, economies of scale have actually made them more accessible than ever before. And in some parts of the world, you can get them for as little as 50 quid if you're in the UK, or Australia, you can get some Botox treat, light Botox treatments done for about a hundred bucks or starting at a hundred bucks which means it's more affordable than ever and it makes sense that people are increasingly especially when we're spending so much time in front of a screen people are very um, concerned about how they look and would rather spend their money on presenting their most zoom ready selves than and forego other purchases the point being that if people are increasingly seeing cosmetical inject injectables as an absolute necessity. It means that Botox sales and dermal filler sales are absolutely worth watching from an investment point of view because they could present an excellent recession-proof investment opportunity going forward. All right, that is it from me here at Rock Solid Investing. I promise you in our next video, I will get back to talking about rocks. However, I felt that the Botox barometer was too good an opportunity to pass up. That's it from me. Make sure if you like today's video or don't like today's video, drop a comment below uh, and I look forward to seeing you around the net.